Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proud of you supporting kids in our community and 7 Questions with Emmy. Hey guys, welcome back to 7 Questions with Emmy. Today I'm here at the Shoshone Van Eck, um, Event Center talking with Larry the Cable Guy. He um, is a multi-platinum recording artist. He's been in... Say that one again. Multi-platinum recording Multi artist. Multi... I just like hearing it. <laughs> um, he's been in multiple movies. Multiple has, movies. It's not to a... I mean, this is a big deal. I'm a big star. <laughs> and this is the voice of Mater in Cars. He's performed all around the world. That's pretty cool. That's not too bad. Yeah. And he's one of the top comedians in the country. Woo-hoo! That makes me happier than the tornado in the trailer park. Dad, go. You're very funny. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Should we get started with the questions? Let's get started with the questions. Okay. Your car's on the road. So I always thought it was cool that you got through Shoshone Bannock. Shoshone Bannock, you did that pretty good because we're at the Shoshone Bannock Event Center. It's a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister, but you did good. Thank you. Um, your Cars on the Road series comes out today on Disney+. Plus. What is it about? It's about uh, McQueen and Mater. Mater's going to see his sister. So we have nine episodes, and each episode is a little adventure that McQueen and Mater get into on their trip. And it's, it's really good. I had a good time recording it. It's funny. I think people are really going to like it. Um, what is it like being the voice of Mater, and how did you get the role? It's really cool, because I get to go up to kids, they'll look at me, and their parents will go, that's Mater, and then they'll look at me, and I'll go, woo my name's Mater, like Tum Mater, without the tuh, and they go like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, you want you to do that. I'm going to go, my name's Mater, and then I want you to go in the camera. My name's Mater, woo See, that's what the kids do, mm-hmm. just like that. <laughs> um... How did you come up with the name Larry the Cable Guy? You know what? I started out doing, uh, I was doing comedy, then I was uh, doing some stuff on radio stations, and they said, well, I could be a part of this radio station, and so I did a bunch of characters. And so Larry the Cable Guy was one of the characters I did, and it just kind of caught on. And then I toured under my name, Dan Whitney, but I also on the radio did a character. And then one day, a friend of mine owned a comedy club, and he said, have you ever thought of performing as Larry the Cable Guy? And I said, no. And he said, can you talk like that all the time? I said, dang on, I talk like a redneck 24 hours a day, because that's all I hang out with. Mm-hmm. So I went on stage, I changed my clothes, and went on stage with what I drove over in. I cut off a Nebraska t-shirt, a NASCAR hat, a pair of jeans, and went up for the first time as Larry the Cable Guy, and the rest is cinematic history, as they say. Um, how did you get your start in comedy? <laughs> oh, man, I started going to, like, open mic nights and stuff like that. I almost backed out. I went to an open mic night the first time, and I was scared because there were guys there with notes and clipboards, and I'm like, there's professionals. I'm just an amateur. I'm just going up make be funny for my friends. And I almost quit, and then a friend of mine said, don't quit. All these people came to see you. So don't quit. You got to go up at least one time. Let's see how the first guy is. If he's not very good, then you know what I mean? So the first guy went up and he wasn't very good. And I said, well, I think I'm funnier than that. So it gave me some incentive. But I went up and I did it and I fell in love with it. And I said, man, that was pretty fun. That's kind of something I'd like to do. That's kind of like my story with reporting, too. Yeah, right. I started with my dad. And then I said, I like that. Let me do my mom. Yeah, and you just kind of liked it. And mm-hmm. and then you just worked at it and you got better and better. Now I'm here doing a famous person. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's a good message for people that watch your thing, you know. Don't ever quit. If you think you want to do something, at least give it a shot, right? Because you don't know if you'll be good at it or not. But at least you know that you tried, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what was it like being on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader with your friend Jeff Foxworthy? He's also my friend, too. I've been an interview with him. You think he's smarter than a fifth grader? Well, I quizzed him, and he actually did get it right. So he is smarter than a Oh, he is? All he right. almost got it wrong. He almost got it wrong, but... He got it right. He is smarter than a fifth grader. Yeah, well, it was fun, and I, I got eliminated. But I made it to the fifth grade question. 
So actually, you're supposed to say, I'm literally the cable guy and I'm not smarter than the fifth grader. But I missed the fifth grade question. So I'm actually smarter than a fourth grader and equal to a fifth grader. So that's what I'm going to say right now. That means you're smarter than me because I'm a fourth grader. I'm, I'm way smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me about your most embarrassing moment on stage? On stage? Oh, man. Or, or anywhere else. Well, other than now, I wet my pants like two minutes ago. Uh, but other than that, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I would say my most embarrassing moment on stage when I was actually performing out here in Idaho about 15 years ago, and there was about 8,500 people in the crowd, 9,000 people. That's a lot. And I'd, I'd been on the road a long time, and we had 10 days off. I didn't think about comedy. I didn't talk comedy. I didn't write. And I said, I'll just go over my act when I get there. And I didn't go over my act, and I went on stage, and 20, I, in the first 20 minutes, great. And then I forgot my act on stage, and I didn't know what to do. I was kind of panicked. I had somebody, I said, I literally said, hey, go get my computer, I forgot my act. And then the crowd started laughing, and then somebody yelled up, hey, start over. So I started over, and I got a big laugh. Then my computer got there and I opened it up, well, that's where I was. Then I went right back into my act, everybody started laughing. And the rest of the show went good. And after I got done, I said, oh man, I feel bad. That was a bad show, these people. And, the, and everybody sent me stuff and said, hey, that show was awesome. Was that planned when you forgot your act? Because that was hilarious. It turned out to be one of the funniest things in the whole act and I didn't plan it. I really forgot my act. But that was probably the most embarrassing. But nobody knew it was embarrassing, but I did. You didn't forget your act this time, though, right? I hope not. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Hopefully that's not a tradition every time you come to Idaho. No, no. We'll be all right this time. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been to Idaho before tonight? And what's your favorite way to have up today? Well, you just said you came to I Idaho. I just said I came so. to Idaho, yeah. What was the second half of it? Um, and what's your favorite way to have a potato? And you've tried our famous potatoes, right? Idaho potatoes? Yeah. Absolutely. What's my favorite way to have them? Yeah. Tot it up. <laughs> French fries are good, too. Uh, you got to add the tots. Tot it up. Now, if it was a regular, just baked potato, put sour cream in there, you put the bacon in there, you put the chives in there, put the cheese, put a little chili on it. Oh, that's pretty good. Now I have some bonus questions. Ah, bonus questions. All right. They may be now, is there money involved in this, if I get the questions right? Am I going to get money? No. No. Did that's you what get... the casino here is for. All right. Did you get Foxworthy money when he answered his bonus questions? All right. Okay, they're a little bit hard, though. Okay. Okay. Um, is it hard to make people laugh? And tell... Can you tell me a joke to make me laugh? I'm already laughing. See? Is it hard to make people laugh? It's You know what? It's not that hard, you know. I uh, God kind of blessed me with the ability to be able to make people laugh, so I just kind of found that that was one of my talents. So it's not that hard. It's hard to write a joke that everybody laughs at, but once you do it long enough, you figure it out, you know. After you try to make me laugh, then I'm going to tell you a joke to make you laugh. All right. Okay, try to make me laugh. Hmm. Well, <laughs> let me see if I got a joke for a little girl, man. What do you call, um, hold on, hold on. Um, I can't think of a joke. Do you want to tell him your joke first, Emmy? Yes. Yeah, you tell me your joke first. See, okay. Laughs. Why was the toilet paper afraid to cross the road? Why was the toilet paper afraid to cross the road? Yeah. Is this something about skid marks? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Why? Because of the crack. The crack. All right. That's the joke I was going to tell you. Uh -huh. I was going to tell you the same joke. As a matter of fact, not only was I going to tell you that joke, that was my closer tonight. You just took my closer. <laughs> The toilet paper butt crack joke. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> what do you like best about being a dad? Best thing about being a dad is being a dad. 
man, it's hard to explain, but being a dad's awesome. You can watch your kids grow up and raise your kids, and how they come to you with problems, you get the hug on them. You know, I like everything about being a dad. Um, what's some advice that you've been given that can help me in my life? Some advice that I can give you to help you in your life? Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, always obey your mom and dad. All right. Always work hard. Don't give up. And and uh, you have God gave you a bunch of talents. You're finding one of them right now, right? You got a lot more in there. So always reach down in there and find the ones that he gave you and use those for good. Okay? Okay. Don't use them for bad. Use them for good. Thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. Thanks for stealing my butt crack closer joke tonight. <laughs> I have a present for you. Wow, thank you. What is it? I hope it's not too sugary. It's not sugary, I don't uh, think. What the heck? Unless you would consider some of those things. A potato's not sugary. Nah, look at that. It's, a, it's, it's an Idaho it's potato. It's buddy buddy. A spuddy buddy? Yeah, he can come with you everywhere you travel. You know what? I'll take him everywhere I go. I'll take my spuddy buddy. Look at that. Me and you and a spuddy buddy. What else you got in here? Uh, we have a seven questions light box. So when I do interviews on Zoom, I have in the background it says it's somebody whose name is in the back. So Larry the Cable Guy and it lights up. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Now, what is this? A thank you card and a seven questions pen. Oh, wow. That is so nice. Dear Larry the Cable Guy, I'm glad you lost weight because last time I saw you, you were getting very fat and I was worried about your health. I did not say I'm that. so happy that you've lost weight so I can do this interview so you didn't have a sweaty heart attack on me because of your largeness. Love you very much. Thank you, Emmy. Well, that's a nice card. Thank you, Emmy. So nice. There's your joke. <laughs> yeah, there's your joke. No, Emmy, that's very nice. She said a lot of nice things, so thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proud of you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.